When announcing their relationship, it happened to be the day when Zhou Sancho returned to the role of best actor. The overwhelming news instantly overwhelmed all the headlines. After Zhou Sancho presented the award, he was interviewed and stood in front of the spotlight, facing the reporter's long gun and short cannon. Mr. Zhou, may I ask how you got together with Miss Ji? Mr. Zhou, why did you choose to expose it today? Amidst the questioning and flashing lights, no one noticed that the popular female Li Ji Ran, who was supposed to be filming in B City, was quietly entering the press area in black. Holding the borrowed microphone and tiptoeing, Ji Ran and Zhou Xuanqing failed to finish work, so they made an effort to get closer to the front. Mr. Zhou, there are rumors that you were the first to pursue Miss Ji. Is this true? Upon hearing this, there seemed to be a momentary silence, and the journalist section was in an uproar. Looking at the woman in black who was asking the question, no one knew that Emperor Ng of Zhou had always been concerned about privacy, and even the top paparazzi knew nothing about the exposure of their relationship this time. I don't know where the news that should have shocked the young woman came from, or whether it should have shocked her to dare to ask in front of everyone at the risk of being banned by an actor. All the reporters present were sweating for the career of young women, only to see the dignified man raise his eyebrows without saying a word. Han Xiao looked at the disguised journalist with sparkling eyes and playful eyebrows, his eyes fixed on each other, flowing with those hearts that only he knew. Yes, I fell in love with her at first sight. Keywords of the novel Top Stream CP Full Score Sweet No Pop-Ups Top Stream CP Full Score Sweet TXT Complete Collection Download Top Stream CP Full Score Sweet Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Once, there was a sincere love in front of me. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Once, there was a sincere love presented to me. When Zhou Xuanxu was invited to become a substitute teacher of Beijing Film University, Ji Ran was in the canteen, his mouth full of stewed pork ball in brown sauce. Gu Yi next to her immediately opened Weibo's hot search, and the entry had already been marked as explosive. Super talk reading quickly surged to 280 million. You truly deserve to be the movie emperor, you see, you see. Don't forget to put your phone in front of Ji Ran, whose eyes were only focused on food, vague, and unable to say a complete sentence. I had to push away my phone, and Ji Ran tried hard to swallow the lion's head in her mouth. Gu Yi is still eagerly reading the comments. Top-tier students are also entering the education industry now, TSK 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 TS upstairs don't speak too harshly as the saying goes there is a specialization in the craft why don't you also try teaching to eat lemons? Brother Zhou is great. Congratulations on my husband's new identity. I suddenly look forward to seeing Brother Sun teaching with black framed glasses on. Brother Sun put on his black framed glasses. Director, come and take a look. Sincerely ask when we can arrange a campus play for Brother Sun. Congratulations to actor Zhou Sanchu for returning to his alma mater and taking up his position. Next, please look forward to the movie, Jinghua, scheduled for March 17. Wu Wu really envies the students at Jingying University, they can see Brother Sun twice a week. Envy. Envy a ghost. Ghosts envy. When Ji Ran heard this, he couldn't help roast in his heart. Looking back on the character creation class in the morning, she really wanted to find a cave and hide inside for three to five years. The cause was still last night's dormitory dinner, and Ji Ran was honored to have the ultimate adventure, confessing to a classic segment of a heterosexual performance about journey to the West. There was no opposite sex present, so the punishment was naturally postponed to the next day. A.I.E. is also fond of playing. As a host, she simply assigned the opposite sex to the role creation class teacher. Ji Ran pondered for a moment, 
and the teacher of the character creation class was Professor Wang, who is 56 years old. He likes to get along with his classmates the most in his daily life. Old actors have experienced countless battles, so it must not be difficult, so he readily agreed. As a result, Zhou Sunchu parachuted in. Hello everyone, my name is Zhou Xuancha. I am the teacher of this semester's character creation class. When Zhou Sunchu started introducing himself, Ji Ran was completely confused and surrounded. Ji Ran. The teacher is here, come on a big adventure. Surprisingly, there has been a change of teacher this semester, why don't we know at all? No wonder the name is not displayed on the schedule, it turns out to be Zhou Yingdi. Ji Ran Ji Ran, please fulfill the agreement seriously. Come on, we are with you. Unable to keep up the excitement in the dormitory group, Ji Ran was powerless to argue. In the spirit of the game, willing to give up, Zhou Sanchu had just finished speaking when Ji Ran gritted his teeth and stood up straight. Walking up to Zhou Xuanchen, without waiting for him to speak, Ji Ran gritted her head and began to perform with deep affection. There used to be a sincere love before me. Directly replacing Zhou Sanchu as the biggest focus. It wasn't until Ji Ran finished a whole performance that the classroom burst into thunderous applause and laughter. Due to the scene of the character, Ji Ran did not have a tight spell, so he kept looking at Zhou Sanchu. His eyes changed from shock to surprise, and he understood for a moment with a gentle smile. Teacher Zhou, I'm sorry. Ji Ran finished speaking and quickly ran off the podium. What did Zhou Sanchu say about her confession? By the way, he smiled Han and said, this classmate has a great talent for acting. So Ji Ran broke the record of speaking the least in an entire class. Gu Yi looked at Ji Ran's face and knew the reason. She gave Ji Ran an extra lion's head and couldn't help but laugh. Ran Ran, actually your performance this morning was really good. I watched Zhou Yingdi. Oh no, teacher Zhou, he was stunned. Don't mention E, don't remind me, let me forget about it. Ji Ran turned off her phone and ate the lion's head with heartache. The liveliness on Weibo did not cause much trouble for Jingying University. Ji Ran and Gu Yi finished their meal and walked out of the restaurant. The campus was still busy with classes and students going out to play. Ran Ran, there's no class this afternoon. Where are you going? Gu Yi put away her phone, squinted her eyes, and asked lazily. Ji Ran opened the unread message and glanced at it. Teacher Lu is looking for me, I need to go over. Farewell to Gu Yi, Ji Ran walked through the teaching building and walked into the office area all the way. Teacher Lu Songhua is Ji Ran's homeroom teacher, and she personally recommended Ji Ran to study at Jingying University in the United States two years ago. It can be said that without the persuasion and hard work of teacher Lu Songhua back then, Ji Ran would never have been involved in the entertainment industry. Teacher Lu, what can I do for you? Ji Ran came to the office, and teacher Lu was looking at a document in his hand. Seeing Ji Ran coming, she smiled gently and handed her bound script to Ji Ran. This is the script, like a dream order, that director Wu Tianxer is preparing to shoot. He asked me to recommend a student to audition for the third female lead, and I recommended you. The original investment for this drama was not high, and it was budgeted according to the scale of the online drama. However, Zhou Sunchu suddenly agreed to appear a few days ago, and the investment increased one after another, almost doubling the budget. So this audition, you must seize the opportunity, carefully experience the role, ask me if you have any questions, and cheer for the audition. Ji Ran didn't expect teacher Lu to recommend TV dramas to her in her sophomore year. She was stunned for a moment and quickly thanked her. Leaving the office holding the script, Ji Ran took out her phone and glanced at the time. 13, 08 actually, she didn't have any other plans today, so Ji Ran walked straight towards the library. Upon arriving at the library, Ji Ran eagerly opened the script. The rhythm of the entire story is as its name suggests, 
and the third female character that Ji Ran is going to play is a positive image with deep affection for the female protagonist. Sanlin Ian, the daughter of the Grand Preceptor, has been a childhood sweetheart with general guide Gu Sui since childhood. The good times didn't last long as the enemy invaded. Gu Suiji was ordered to lead troops to battle, but he never returned. The script is only given to Gu Suiji's death in battle, while the audition is a free play of the scene where Lin Ian learns of his death. After a brief review, Ji Ran closed the script and kept repeating the story in her mind. The longing bamboo horse can never come back on the battlefield, and when the news of her death came, she was dressing up by the window, looking forward to seeing that person. The next afternoon during the interview, Ji Ran arrived at the hotel early. There are not many scenes for the third female, and two young girls of similar age are already waiting at the door of the room. One of them, Ji Ran, knows Xiao Yoguang, who was a popular little flower in the past two years. It's clearly not the hot Tianqi, and the assistant is still fanning Nan. Stop next to it. Summer flowing light flipped through hot searches, revealing a restless mood. If Ji Ran remembers correctly, Xiao Yoguang has had a lot of negative news lately, and with her fame, the reason why she personally came to interview for the female lead is probably because she wanted to use her role as Zhou Xuanxia to create a wave of goodwill among passers-by. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Continue to Strive You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Continue to Strive If Ji Ran remembers correctly, Xiao Yoguang has had a lot of negative news lately, and with her fame, the reason why she personally came to interview for the female lead is probably because she wanted to use her role as Zhou Xuanxia to create a wave of goodwill among passers-by. Facing Xiao Yoguang's determined expression, Ji Ran shook her head in her heart. It seems that this role is indeed highly competitive. Not affected, Ji Ran found a seat and sat down, while the other two looked up calmly without any intention of speaking to her. This actually gave Ji Ran a sense of relief, and the interview quickly began. Ji Ran, as the last one, glanced at the tightly closed room door, put the script aside, and took out her phone. Ran Ran, have you been there yet? How is the director? Did the interview go smoothly? Have you seen producer Qin He? I admire him so much. Can you help me get a signature? Gu Yi's WeChat messages popped up one after another, and Ji Ran patiently replied. Number 3, Ji Ran. The first two interviewees quickly walked out, and Ji Ran quickly closed her phone, responded, and walked over. The decorations in the room were similar to what Ji Ran had imagined, but among a row of directors and producers participating in the interview, Ji Ran was surprised to see Zhou Xuancheng. I heard early on that Zhou Xuancheng had strict requirements for his own performances, but I didn't expect to see him here as well. How could he participate in the casting? Zhou Xuancheng was much calmer, looking at her as if he had forgotten what happened in class yesterday. Let's introduce ourselves first. Director Wu Tianxi sat in the middle, speaking with a friendly expression. With a sigh of relief, Ji Ran nodded confidently and said, Hello teachers, my name is Ji Ran. I come from the performance department of Jingying University and I am a sophomore student. My height is 168 and I weigh 48 kilograms. After the usual introduction, Ji Ran smoothly began her performance. There was only one chair in front of him, which should have been left for the performer to use as a prop. Ji Ran quickly entered the state and sat down. There is a staff member playing with her next to her, knocking on the door with great respect. Miss, General. General Back. Ji Ran turned around and gazed at the door, his gaze filled with eager eagerness. General. The staff paused for a moment and handed a blank piece of paper to Ji Ran. Miss, this is from the battlefield. Ji Ran happily took it over and studied word by word. Emotions changed with the speed of reading, and at the end, Ji Ran's tears fell on the paper, soaking through. Looking up, Ji Ran placed the white paper on the dressing table, and a row of geese flew by the window. 
Impossible. My beloved is a gentleman. He said he will come back, and I will wait for him here. A gentleman's words are unforgettable. He will definitely come back. Card. Just right, G. Rand's tears flowed down her cheeks, and the voiceover sounded, quickly wiping it off. In the blink of an eye, I saw the director with a glint in the corner of my eye. The next morning, G. Ran was awakened by Teacher Lu's phone call. When there was no class in the morning, G. Ran liked to sleep in very much. At this time, she was awakened and reluctantly answered the phone. G. Ran, I have good news for you. Director Wu Tianshir just informed me that he has confirmed your role as the third female lead. Ah. G. Ran slipped up from the bed. Really, teacher. When did the teacher deceive you? Suddenly feeling completely sleepy, the teacher's voice continued to come from the microphone. However, although it was me who recommended it, with Zhou Sanchu present, the competition pressure for the third female lead was also high. The teacher heard that Xiao Youguang also went to the scene yesterday. Ji Ran nodded and realized that she was on the phone, so she quickly spoke up. Yeah. Xiao Youguang's studio provided the crew with a lot of convenience, and even offered to lower the film's salary and add additional sponsorship. However, according to the director, in the end, Zhou Sanchu overcame public opinion and confirmed that you would play the third female lead. Ji Ran listened attentively, but her heart became unreal. Zhou Sanchu. Overcoming public opinion. Why? One is a popular little flower, and the other is a student, leaving Ji Ran puzzled. So, next time in class, you should thank the teacher well for a week. If it weren't for him, this hard-won opportunity would likely no longer exist. In the afternoon, the character creation class begins. A class lasted for an hour and a half, and Zhou Xuancheng was busy correcting the problems of the previous groups. Before it was Ji Ran and his group's turn, the bell for the end of class rang on time. Fortunately, although strict, Zhou Xuancheng never procrastinates. Ji Ran kept staring at Zhou Xuancheng's packing movements, and as soon as Zhou Xuancheng left the classroom, he quickly followed suit. At the staircase, Ji Ran grabbed Zhou Sanchu. The classroom is high, and most people would choose to take the elevator, so the empty stairs are only the voice of Ji Ran. Teacher Zhou, Teacher Lu told me that it was you who helped me get the opportunity to become the third female lead in Dreamlike Order. Hmm. Zhou Sanchu seemed to have anticipated that Ji Ran would come looking for him, without any displeasure of being disturbed. Teacher, can I know why? Ji Ran pursued. I also believe that Lin Yin, as a noble and courteous woman who has been pampered since childhood, should not yell and become overly emotional when facing her beloved who died in battle. It is obvious that the other two competitors' performances were too forceful, and your performance was just right and very touching. Zhou Sanchu explained carefully. Ji Ran was stunned for a moment and said, You. What she wants to ask is, as the male lead, how could Zhou Sanchu be so familiar with the female lead number three? However, it is reasonable to immediately think of Zhou Xuancheng's strict standards for filming quality. So it stuck. I believe in the people recommended by Teacher Lu, but the real reason that prompted me to make a choice is your performance. In my eyes, there is no difference between top-tier celebrities and performing students. As long as your performance is good enough, you can handle any scene. Can you understand this explanation? Ji Ran understood at the beginning. Nodding, thank you, Teacher Zhou. Keep working hard and ask me if you don't understand anything. In the evening, Ji Ran and Gu Yi lingered on the snack street for a while before returning to their dormitory. It was already 11.30 after washing up, and Ji Ran sat at the table, bored and flipping through Weibo. It's just some publicity and gossip, which Fan caused a lot of trouble because of their brother and sister's position. I thought of Zhou Xuancheng's words again. As long as your performance is good enough, you can handle any scene. The restless fame and fortune market seems to have heard such words for a long time. 
Ji Ran lowered her eyes and recorded on her Weibo account. When she was abroad, Ji Ran was busy with her studies and almost never pursued celebrities. When she returned to China, she also encountered many things in the industry, such as fan filters, which never existed in her. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Teacher Zhou, Be Happy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Teacher Zhou, Be Happy when she was abroad, Ji Ran was busy with her studies and almost never pursued celebrities. When she returned to China, she also encountered many things in the industry, such as fan filters, which never existed in her. Opening Zhou Xuanqing's super words, it was rare for Ji Ran to read them one by one. Zhou Yingdi seems to be a very good person. Close Weibo, Ji Ran opens WeChat and finds the WeChat group called 2020 Character Creation Course. Zhou Xuanqin was indeed in the group, and Ji Ran didn't hesitate to add friends. The next morning, he was delayed in passing. The start date of Ru Meng Ling is set for March 1st, and it is Ji Ran's first time joining the group. Although there are not many scenes, it inevitably becomes a bit tense as the date approaches. Gu Yi noticed that Ji Ran's emotions had changed, and she had invited Ji Ran to have more snacks. Two people were eating, drinking, and playing while attending classes, and soon it was the end of February. February 28th is a very important day for Ji Ran. Twelve years ago, she lost her grandfather who accompanied her since childhood. Ji Ran's parents often went on business trips without her since she was very young, and both Ji Ran and her younger brother Ji Ming were raised by their grandfather in the countryside. After his grandfather passed away at the age of seven, Ji Ran was arranged by his parents to study abroad. The departure of her grandfather was a great blow to Ji Ran. She could never see the grandfather who patted her back and coaxed her to sleep again, and no one would tell her the stories of the seven dwarfs when she was afraid of the dark and couldn't sleep. And since then, Ji Ran has never seen Ji Ming again. When Ji Ran went abroad to study, Ji Ming was still in kindergarten. And when Ji Ming reached the age when he should go to primary school, his parents also began to return to China for development, so they decided to keep Ji Ming in China. Ji Ran studied abroad until graduating from high school, and Ji Ming also smoothly advanced to the third year of high school in China. The two siblings were able to chat online, and it wasn't until Ji Ran returned to China that they gradually saw Ji Ming more times. After lunch, Ji Ming waited for her at the entrance of Jingying University. Originally, Ji Ran and Ji Ming were supposed to visit their grandfather together at this time of the year, but Ji Ran's absence over the years made Ji Ming feel much heavier on this day. A handsome and clear-looking man from his senior year of high school, dressed in a serious suit, caught a lot of quiet glances at the entrance of Jingying University in an instant. If you come a few more times, the gatekeeper will definitely recognize you as a student of Jingying University. Ji Ran glanced at the young girl who was sneaking a peek nearby, and the girl looked away with embarrassment. Ji Ming, unaware of the gaze gathered around him, saw Ji Ran and helped him open the car door. Sister, I'm not interested in filming. Jingyan Cemetery is located in a vacant area on the outskirts of the city. A decade ago, it was an undeveloped wasteland. Ji Ming and Ji Ran got off the car and walked straight inside. Are parents still not coming back this year? Ji Ming asked as he walked, holding a bouquet of small daisies. When I was a child, I remember my grandfather liked the little daisies just picked on the roadside the most. Ji Ran responded faintly while tidying up the ribbons on the daisies. Hmm. Today is Grandpa's death day, parents should come back and take a look, Ji Ming's tone seemed to be about a trivial matter. Ji Ran knew that although Ji Ming didn't mention anything about his parents, he always held a grudge in his heart. But for Ji Ran, it seems that she doesn't have that much emotion. When she was young, having her grandfather by her side gave her the happiest childhood. After going abroad, there were Chris and Anderson. When I went to college, I met Gu Yi, as if she had never been alone along the way. But cannot being alone become a reason for not holding grudges? 
Ji Ran doesn't know. After all, she never felt lonely because her grandfather gave her so much love and warmth when she was a child, which was very dramatic and had nothing to do with her biological parents. Her biological parents were supposed to be involved in the most important part of her life, but now only the vague memories in the chat box remain. Thinking about it, the two of them had already walked up to a small tombstone. Grandpa's photo is right in the middle of the tombstone, and after too long, the photo begins to turn yellow. However, the kind and kind smile on it is exactly the same as G. Rant's memory. The cemetery is cleaned by regular people every day, so the empty steps in front of the tombstone are clean and tidy, reminding G. Ran of the small house in his hometown. Although it was a bit old, it was still cleaned up spotlessly by his clean grandfather. Gently placing the little daisy on the steps, G. Ran looked at the figure on the tombstone. Grandpa, I will join the group tomorrow. Although I am the third female lead, it was recommended to me by Teacher Lu. I really like this role and want to play it well. Can you be there and cheer me on? Ji Ming listened calmly and gave Ji Ran a resentful look. Sister, why didn't you tell me about this? Little brat, prepare well for your college entrance examination, and don't worry about my affairs. Ji Ran patted Ji Ming's head, just like his playful personality when he was a child. The atmosphere became more lively, and Ji Ming silently responded, facing the tombstone and squatting down. Grandpa, I will take the college entrance examination this year. The school is very strict and I can't sneak out to see you like before. When the college entrance examination is over, I will come to see you in June with a notice. You must have a very happy time in the sky. The siblings talked a lot, as if they had really spent another afternoon with their grandfather. When Ji Ran left the cemetery, his tense emotions due to joining the group had been completely replaced by calmness. At the entrance of the cemetery, the scheduled car was waiting at the door. Ji Ran pulled open the car door from the other side, his perspective shifted, but he saw a familiar figure. It's Zhou Xuanchen. Zhou Xuanchu, wearing sunglasses and a black windbreaker, was coming out of the cemetery. I don't know how I met Zhou Xuanchen here. Ji Ran stared at him a little longer, and it was obvious that Zhou Xuancheng also saw Ji Ran and walked towards him. Ji Ming saw that Ji Ran was unwilling to board the car for a long time and interrupted her. It was only then that Ji Ran realized and explained to Ji Ming. Ji Ming, my teacher is over there. I'll go over and have a few words with him. You go back first, study hard and prepare for the college entrance examination. I believe you. Ji Ran closed the car door, and Ji Ming also understood his straightforward nature, so he didn't ask much. Zhou Sunchu had already walked up to Ji Ran. Visiting relatives. Zhou Sunchu asked. Yes. Are you also, teacher Zhou? Zhou Xuanqing nodded. Ji Ran had never seen such a sad expression before, without saying much, but turning everything around him blue. I think Zhou Sunchu's success should be similar to that of an ordinary person in his heart. There are important and important people, but they are still the ones who have passed away. Just like her and grandpa. Teacher Zhou, be happy. Ji Ran couldn't help but extend his hand, wanting to raise the corner of Zhou Xuanqing's mouth. Fortunately, there was just a movement and she noticed it in time. The hand stretched out in mid-air paused, changed direction, and then took out a piece of candy from his pocket and handed it to Zhou Xuancheng. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Sorry everyone, there is a traffic jam on the road. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 4 Sorry everyone, there is a traffic jam on the road. The hand stretched out in mid-air paused, changed direction, and then took out a piece of candy from his pocket and handed it to Zhou Xuancheng. The next morning, after taking leave with the teacher, Ji Ran set off from school and boarded the crew's dedicated car. The scenes from the first two months were all in the film and television city next to B City, and Kihin University is located near the suburbs, so she could still go there on the same day. 
The film and television city in the suburbs of B City was built 10 years ago, emerging but with huge investment, so it is equipped with a complete set of entertainment and work facilities. Director Wu Tianshu has prepared the hotel. When Ji Ran arrived, the banquet hall was bustling with actors, staff, screenwriters, and producers present. However, almost everyone's positions were unconsciously left empty. Ji Ran is not a famous actor. As a current student, he has not yet signed a contract with a management company and is even less transparent than Xiao Transparent. Even though Zhou Xuanqing managed to save himself, no one knew that Zhou Xuanqing, as a character who took on the script, was most interested in acting skills. Ji Ran's lucky acting skills have been recognized, but without any background transparency, he still won't be noticed. Any news would spread widely in the entertainment industry, so when Ji Ran came in, no one took the initiative to greet her and continued her social interactions. Having already thought of this level in advance, and with Zhou Xuanqing actually indirectly reminding her not to care about the opinions of others yesterday, Ji Ran faced this scene without any embarrassment. Looking around, the traffic jam on the road caused Ji Ran to arrive half an hour later than expected, leaving only a spot next to the director and a vacant table in the middle. Ji Ran naturally dared not claim to be the first important character in this play, so he wisely sat in the middle. Her side is the recently popular actor Chen Moyan. Ji Ran checked the information in advance and is also the third male lead who plays the most against her. On the opposite side is Su Yun, a famous evergreen tree. She is in her thirties and plays the role of the second female lead, Princess Yaqing. She still maintains a radiant and youthful appearance. Just as he sat down, director Wu Tianshu, who was originally talking to the producer, noticed Ji Ran and smiled, nodding towards him. Ji Ran was surprised and went back. Chen Moyan saw their interaction and took the initiative to put down his chopsticks, reaching out to Ji Ran. You are Ji Ran, right? Hello, I am Chen Moyan. I play Gu Yi at Remengling. Chen Moyan's persona outside is that of a big celebrity with a cold and aloof face that doesn't disturb strangers. Unexpectedly, while smiling in private, communication feels so approachable. Ji Ran shook hands friendly and said, Nice to meet you. I'm Ji Ran. I haven't heard of you before. I only found out yesterday that you are still a student in the performance department of Jingying University. I am not from a professional background, and I would like to ask for your guidance. Chen Moyan is indeed not from a professional background. He debuted five years ago and was originally a famous singer. It was only in the past two years that he transformed and developed towards the direction of the film and television industry. However, whether it was due to exceptional talent or apprenticeship, the first film, Dream of Time, was released and its acting skills were widely recognized in the industry. I don't know. I'm just a sophomore with no practical experience, so I need more senior colleagues to include me. Ji Ran smiled gently, and Chen Moyan seemed to have something else to say, but before he could say it, the door of the banquet hall was pushed open by the last late arriving actor. That is the male lead, Zhou Sunchu. Sorry everyone, there is traffic jam on the way. At this moment, Zhou Sunchu was dressed in a well-cut black windbreaker, took off his sunglasses, and he became the unsmiling emperor of Zhou Ying. A group of people stood up to welcome Zhou Xuancheng. The director eagerly pulled Zhou Xuancheng to his side, and all of this happened. Ji Ran's gaze always fell on Zhou Xuancheng. In the entertainment industry, it is inevitable that Zhou Xuancheng will appear in the tumultuous fame and fortune arena. But he is the only one, cold and noble. Ji Ran's announcement this week will be in the next three days, so she still has two days of free time after joining the group. Zhou Sunchu, on the other hand, had uninterrupted filming in other arrangements. In order to ensure progress, the director sought approval and concentrated Zhou Sunchu's scenes on weekly workdays. Although she is the third female lead with many roles, Ji Ran does not have a team around her and the production team does not have assistance, making her a complete newcomer. So Ji Ran was naturally arranged in the room at the edge of the sixth floor, 
which cannot be compared to the treatment of Zhou Xuanche's top floor suite. The intention is clear, she only needs to appear on time on the set to film, and besides that, no one pays much attention. Therefore, during the day, Ji Ran spent most of her time wandering around the film and television city. B City Film and Television City is a project jointly invested by Friendship Strategy Industry in Sunying Group 10 years ago, costing hundreds of millions of yuan and covering an area of 3,000 acres. It took three to four years to build and open for filming by the film crew. It still does not receive tourists. The scale and facilities are no less than Hengjian. However, what Ji Ran likes the most is still the small park next to the production team of Ru Mengling. It's early spring now, and the chill hasn't subsided, but soon it's the season of warm spring and blooming flowers. Ji Ran wore a blue floral skirt and sat on a bench next to the park. The hem of the skirt was blown by the gentle breeze, and the tender willow shoots, flower buds, and butterflies were all symbols of vitality. She loves these lively romances the most, perhaps because she was influenced by her grandfather. When he was a child, he loved to play with flowers and plants, and the yard was filled with timely blooming plants. Close your eyes, it's still peaceful. There is an artificial lake not far away, and the surface of the lake appears sparkling and brilliant under the ten o'clock sunlight. Black and white swans flock together, and the swan with a plush string ball is the most special. Even if it is far away, Ji Ran can immediately notice it. So he took out his phone and couldn't help but focus. Zoom in, try to lock in that special swan, and suddenly an additional person appears in the bottom right corner of the screen. A thin and tall figure, Wearing a duckbill cap and light gray casual clothes, Ji Ran noticed and met the person in the camera. Chen Moyan. It's not surprising to meet Chen Moyan here, and he probably didn't announce it today. When Ji Ran recognized him, Chen Moyan clearly recognized him as well, so he decisively walked towards her. As Chen Moyan approached, Ji Ran put down her phone and reflexively glanced at the distance. There is a reason for doing this, according to Chen Moyan's popularity in popularity, the nearby agency should be very obvious. Strangely, no matter how Ji Ran observed it, there were signs of emptiness in the corners, rooftops, and even trees. Chen Moyan also sat next to her at this moment, knowing what Ji Ran was looking for everywhere, and pointed to the place where the production team started in the film and television city. You don't know yet, Zhou Ji's crew has always had strict supervision over acting. His fans won't come here to do the acting, so other actors in the same group have been taken care of, and there won't be any acting or paparazzi appearing nearby. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Come and see the scene when you have time tomorrow. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Come and see the scene when you have time tomorrow. His fans won't come here to do the acting, so other actors in the same group have been taken care of, and there won't be any acting or paparazzi appearing nearby. So it's like this. Ji Ran nodded to understand. Zhou Xuanchu is really a man like what is said in the rumors. Just, brother Zhou, puzzled. Chen Moyan and Zhou Sanchu, one singer and one actor, are also in the same group for the first time. Ji Ran has not seen them greet each other yet. The title here may seem strange, and the actors who meet for the first time are usually referred to as Teacher Zhou. Faced with Ji Ran's question, Chen Moyan smiled. With a helpless yet gentle smile, he should have been a sunny neighbor's big brother. It is only in many cases that, in public, one cannot help but be forcibly transformed into a persona that is not close to life. Ji Ran looked at Chen Moyan and thought to herself. You don't know, I got into this industry because of Zhou Gu. If it weren't for his discovery, I might still be an unknown 18th line singer in a bar and on the streets. Living in poverty every day, living in a dark and damp basement, my only dream is the yellowed and old guitar in my hand. Unexpectedly, the two people who appeared to have no intersection on the surface also had such unexpected bonds, and Ji Ran suddenly realized. Just Chen Moyan is fair and delicate, yet still strong and powerful. 
If it were anyone, it would be impossible to see that he had such an experience before. Faced with the past, I didn't know what to respond to for a moment. Ji Ran nodded and looked at the swan in the distance. At this point, it had already drifted further and further, reaching a location that the camera could not capture clearly. After dinner, when Ji Ran was preparing to take the elevator, she happened to meet Zhou Sunchu, who was also waiting. At the end of the day's filming, Zhou Sunchu had time to change his clothes and still wore the crew's costumes. He wore a noble black robe with golden dragon patterns, exuding a stern image of an emperor. Moreover, Zhou Xuancheng's face was expressionless at this moment, and within a radius of ten meters, he hardly dared to speak loudly. He doesn't have any other staff around him, so it should be Zhou Sunchu who gave them early leave of work. Ji Ran didn't expect to meet Zhou Sunchu here, and the strings in his mind immediately became tense. He didn't know if it was a pounding heart or rapid breathing. Hello, Teacher Zhou. Saying hello, Ji Ran realized that she could no longer distinguish whether Zhou Xuancheng was a teacher in the school or a senior in the circle. Zhou Xuancheng's attention was diverted, and at this moment, those expressionless faces appeared to be somewhat obvious signs of fatigue. So nodding in response to Ji Ran, the elevator opened and Ji Ran and Zhou Sanchu walked in together. The elevator was steadily rising, and although it was quiet inside, Ji Ran had a strong desire to speak. Therefore, I have been brainstorming what I should say and breaking the silence. How was Zhou Sanchu's filming today? No, this should be the director's concern. How could the best actor need her as a small newcomer to ask these questions? So remind Zhou Sanchu to rest early. But Zhou Sanchu is not a three-year-old child, and it's getting late. Naturally, he is ready to go up and rest. Ask some performance questions. This is even worse. Zhou Sanchu looks so tired already, she is not someone who cannot observe words and expressions. As the numbers indicating the floors changed and changed, Ji Ran's mood of wanting to say something became even more intense for some reason. Then, she heard Zhou Xuancheng's voice. If you have time tomorrow, come to the scene more often to see and learn from the experience. The day after tomorrow, you will officially shoot and prepare in advance. When Zhou Sunchu said these words, his tone was calm, and his gaze, like Ji Ran, fell on the instructions on the floor. Ji Ran was delighted in her heart and said, Good teacher Zhou, I will definitely go tomorrow. The sixth floor is here, and the elevator door opens. If there is a level in the review, Ji Ran must be in the top dot level state of full health resurrection now. Leaving the elevator and happily returning to the room, Ji Ran didn't even notice the ripples he had caused by Zhou Xuancheng. On the contrary, she was still pleasantly surprised when Zhou Sanchu remembered her announcement time. Looking at her naturally flushed cheeks in front of the mirror, Ji Ran controlled her smile, picked up her hairband, and prepared to remove her makeup and wash up. Her skin has always been very good, with a white to red complexion, and her innate bone foundation, which does not require any post-adjustment, is truly natural beauty. Ji Ran is also accustomed to wearing light makeup on weekdays, so it doesn't take much effort to remove makeup. In less than half an hour, Ji Ran changed into pajamas, took out yogurt from the refrigerator, and sat at the dining table in slippers. At night, she had nothing to do and strolled around the night market near the film and television city. Ji Ran bought a lot of snacks and realized that she had eaten too much, so she wanted to drink a cup of yogurt to digest. Turning on the TV, it happened to be the movie channel. Undoubtedly, seeing the preview of Zhou Xuancheng and Jinghua, Ji Ran did not change channels. Zhou Sanchu has always been a responsible person, including but not limited to being responsible for the likes of fans and for his own works. The trailer is very in line with Ji Ran's aesthetics. She doesn't like to see mindless marketing in TV dramas and movies on a daily basis, but she hasn't seen much reviews for this drama, so her impression is still good. So Ji Ran took out her phone and began searching for the arrangements for March 17th. Starting from next week, there will be a lot of announcements behind Ji Ran, 
but only March 17th is a blank day. So he withdrew from the calendar and Ji Ran booked a movie ticket for Jinghua. Early in the morning, Ji Ran woke up and tidied up, then went to the filming location of Group A where Zhou Sanchu was located. When she arrived, Zhou Sanchu had already finished her makeup and was sitting in the middle, watching the script. Ji Ran had done her homework in advance, and the scene she was preparing to shoot today was a scene where the male and female leads had a big argument due to a misunderstanding of their beliefs. The female lead of Ru Meng Ling is a first dot line actress named Xiao Tan, who is different from other artists in the industry who are either struggling or overnight famous. She comes from a family of film and television. Both parents are famous actors from the previous generation, and my grandfather is also a renowned international director. Mr. Chiao Hua Chiao, who has won multiple awards. Chiao Tan is the only descendant of the Chiao family, so both generations naturally gave the accumulated resources to Chiao Tan. In addition, Chiao Tan was already diligent and hardworking. Although he was young, he started his career in performing arts at the age of three. So far, she has won several awards for Best Actress and has become a well-deserved frontline actress. In terms of acting skills and qualifications, she is also a senior member of many people in this industry. Ji Ran looked around for a week, but did not see Xiao Tan's figure. He thought he was still changing clothes. Ji Ran found a seat in an inconspicuous place next to him and sat down. This angle allows for a good view of the play between Zhou Sunchu and Xiao Tan, without affecting other crew members. Zhou Sanchu also saw Ji Ran at first glance. There were many people walking through, so Ji Ran didn't step forward and exchanged glances between several people. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Almost You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Almost Zhou Sanchu also saw Ji Ran at first glance. There were many people walking through, so Ji Ran didn't step forward and exchanged glances between several people. Half an hour later, Xiao Tan slowly appeared in Ji Ran's sight. Red clothes and golden hairpins, black hair cascading like snow. Xiao Tan is about 1.72 meters tall, wearing ankle-length ancient clothing and a perfect peach blossom face. With every frown and smile, he looks like a lady from an ancient family. As soon as she appeared, everyone's gaze was involuntarily drawn. The director immediately began filming, and Xiao Tan had a proper upbringing and atmosphere. After apologizing for today's delay, he quickly entered the state. Start. With a sound, the camera began to work. Ji Ran was originally sitting steadily, even though no one in front of her was blocking her view, she couldn't help but stand up. Zhou Sanchu and Xiao Tan are truly veteran actors, and even the original lines are recited with resounding and powerful force, which is very shocking. They are one of the few actors in the entertainment industry who always use original voice acting. Ji Ran had heard of it before, and Xiao Tan went to study for a year to improve his voice acting skills. The gaze kept falling on Zhou Xuanchen, and there was no physical contact between the two in this scene. It took only about ten minutes to pass by, and ended with Xiao Tan shaking his hand and angrily leaving the camera. The other staff seemed to have become accustomed to the efficiency of Zhou Sanchu and Xiao Tan's one dot on dot one approach. After the director shouted, card, they quickly prepared the next scene. For some reason, without witnessing the physical contact between the two of them, Ji Ran felt relieved. As Zhou Sanchu was surrounded by everyone and sat down on the chair, Ji Ran's mind was constantly replaying the scene from earlier. It is undeniable that the two leading actors have excellent acting skills. But what drove Ji Ran even more in this scene was the profound skills of the screenwriter Ru Mengling. According to her understanding, Ru Mengling was originally a novel that became popular last year and topped the literary list before being signed for the rights to adapt it into a film and television adaptation. At the beginning of its serialization, there were also people around her who were pursuing the novel. Ji Ran, on the other hand, does not often read online novels due to her special growth experience. 
However, with AIE's strong recommendation, I still left a deep impression on this novel. It wasn't until he received the role of Lin Yayan that Ji Ran worked hard and stayed up for several nights, flipping through the original work of Rumming three times. She originally thought that the inability to meet described in the original work was extremely painful, but she didn't expect that after being adapted by the screenwriter and Xia, who was like a dream, this thick sadness seemed to add a gentle and unattainable fate. Recalling the lines in the script, Ji Ran nodded and tried not to immerse herself in such emotions. After sorting it out, Zhou Sanchu walked towards her over there. Ji Ran was completely unaware until Zhou Xuancheng had already stood in front of him, and suddenly looked up. As expected, he was startled by Zhou Xuancheng. Teacher Zhou. Ji Ran asked strangely, and Zhou Sanchu nodded. He had a very pleasant scent of pine wood on his body, which seemed to be for the character, but was actually more in line with the identity of the regent king. After filming together, the relationship between Zhou Sanchu and Ji Ran seemed to be infinitely closer many times. But Ji Ran always felt that when Zhou Xuancheng treated himself, he was like an excellent student in his class. Through a layer of politeness and concern, all their words are limited to work and study. As expected, Zhou Sanchu came to inquire about any suggestions for Ji Ran's opponent's performance. Ji Ran carefully watched the performance of the two but for a moment, she couldn't think of a better way. However, intuitively speaking, Ji Ran still expressed his feelings in detail in front of Zhou Xuancheng. Teacher Zhou, I think the regent is a character who is tolerant and carries too much love and hate interests. When facing misunderstandings with his beloved, he certainly won't hold her like an ordinary person to explain, and the subsequent plot, as we know it, also destined that people like him cannot have too many emotions floating up. The teacher just performed these very well, and I really need to learn more in order to catch up with the teacher's footsteps. Upon hearing Ji Rant's words, Zhou Xuancheng's eyes drooped unconsciously, with a fleeting sense of disappointment in their eyes. However, Ji Ran did not catch this emotion and was waiting for Zhou Xuancheng's response. Not bad, you can carefully assess the character's response and already have the attitude to be a good actor. Are you ready for tomorrow's play? Zhou Xuanchen calmly changed the topic, and Ji Ran was stunned for a moment before nodding. She quickly shook her head in response. Saying she's ready in front of the actor seems too confident, and in most cases, Ji Ran is still the one who compromises. Almost. Zhou Sunchen nodded and said, I have some thoughts about tomorrow's scenes. If you haven't arranged it, come to the top floor of the hotel tonight to see me. Ji Ran didn't expect Zhou Sanchu to take his performance so seriously. With a warm heart, he quickly agreed. Due to the invitation in the morning, Ji Ran hardly completed a single task for the whole day. Or rather, Ji Ran stood in front of the wardrobe in a daze for a whole day. She found that no matter what kind of clothing, when searching for Zhou Xuancheng, she always felt that it was not satisfactory. In the end, she chose a simple and elegant set of white shirts and jeans. Ji Ran tied her head and at 7 o'clock, she took the script and left the room. During the two days of filming in the film and television city, Gu Yi also sent messages to Ji Ran every now and then. Yesterday, I learned that Ji Ran had booked tickets for the movie on March 17 and specifically booked the same one. Standing in front of the elevator, Ji Ran opened WeChat and happened to see the WeChat message sent by Gu Yi. Ran Ran, guess who I saw at school today? Xia Liuguang. Seeing the three words Xia Liuguang, Ji Ran became interested and with a ding sound, she walked into the elevator while typing a reply with one hand. Why is she at school? Xia Liuguang did not come from a professional background. Her self-selected TV shows have become popular, and in recent years there has been a trend to switch to the film and television industry, but her acting skills are not commendable. Ji Ran pressed the elevator button, and the melodious music in the golden elevator rang out. He soon received a reply. I heard from others that they came to my school specifically to attend performance classes. She even had a class with us today, 
but I noticed her approachable and gentle demeanor, which always gave her a bad feeling. Gu Yi was originally a straightforward person, and in front of Ji Ran, she naturally wouldn't hide anything. She had ideas in her heart and decided to speak directly. You don't know how many bodyguards and staff she brought with her when she came, it was pitch black, even more than her classmates in the class. Teacher Lu, who took over the class for Zhou Yingdi today, has a dark face. Because the elevator was arriving soon, Ji Ran didn't pay attention to this matter. After a few simple replies, she turned off her phone. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Because she knew she would see you again. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 8 Waiting for me to come back and marry you. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Waiting for me to come back and marry you, Zhou Sunchu saw Ji Ran's reaction. He had been in the entertainment industry for many years and had acted countless times, so he naturally understood what Ji Ran was thinking. When discussing scripts, new ideas often burst out, which is why I have to discuss with you. Have you seen Chen Moyan before? He also enjoys discussing with people before filming. These habits are not unfounded. Ji Ran nodded and held the script in her hand. Lowering his brows, he saw something different through the words in his hand, written in black and white. I understand, Teacher Zhou. You have a good understanding of this scene, and to some extent, it is exactly the same way of expression as I imagined, Zhou Xuanchik casually added some tea to Ji Ran, my original intention was to provide you with some advice, but now it seems that this is no longer necessary. A rare smile appeared on Zhou Xuanqing's face, and Ji Ran turned his head and met Zhou Xuanqing's gaze without bias. I was stunned for a moment. The next morning, Ji Ran appeared in the dressing room on time as scheduled. The makeup artist for the main character in Resident Like a Dream is the gold medal makeup artist Xiao Qing, who was hired by director Wu Tianxia at a high price. Generally speaking, roles such as makeup artists and fashion designers are often behind the scenes and unknown to others. But Xiao Qing is an exception. In her early years, Xiao Qing was a makeup artist sought after by major directors in the film and television industry. In recent years, she has been unwilling to go behind the scenes and has shifted towards self media. I have also become a well. known beauty blogger. Previously, Ji Ran had a chance encounter with Xiao Qing. It was during her freshman year that Xiao Qing was invited to give a lecture on appearance management at Jingying University. At the lecture, Ji Ran was treated as a volunteer and took the stage as an example for Xiao Qing. Xiao Qing has been familiar with makeup for many years, but when she saw Ji Ran on stage, she couldn't help but suffer from occupational diseases and couldn't help but praise her skin foundation in surprise. Even the concealer doesn't need to be used again. Xiao Qing finishes her makeup very smoothly. However, in line with professionalism, Xiao Qing still added some red dots and freckles to Ji Ran's face at the end to demonstrate to other classmates how to apply makeup in this situation. Apart from her stunning skin foundation, a small upturned nose, delicate and smooth lines, and well dot defined eyebrows, Ji Ran has a distinct pale complexion. Therefore, Xiao Qing doesn't need to add any extra embellishments at all. The basic makeup before and after seems to weaken the effect of makeup. That lecture left a deep impression on Xiao Qing. After the lecture, Xiao Qing even added Ji Ran's WeChat account. Even though both of them had their own jobs and studies and didn't say a few words later on, they could still occasionally see each other's status in their social circle, which could be considered another kind of connection. Sure enough, just as Ji Ran pushed open the door to the dressing room, Xiao Qing recognized her. Ji Ran, classmate. There was still some disbelief in his eyes, after all, with his dreamlike status and scale, it was truly surprising that Ji Ran appeared here. Ji Ran also saw the surprise in Xiao Qing's eyes, but didn't pay much attention and happily greeted her. Teacher Xiao Qing, I have to trouble you a lot today. How could it be? 
Although Xiao Qin was surprised, she was also someone who had entered the entertainment industry. How could she possibly let an emotion stay for too long in front of others? So she skillfully pulled out the chair and let Ji Ran sit down. Xiao Qin dipped herself in a powder puff, helped her glasses, and shook her head. Thanks to your superior conditions, your makeup is the easiest I have ever seen to complete. It should be said that it was thanks to your blessings that I reduced my workload. Because Xiao Qing is usually a straightforward person, Ji Ran knows this, so the two of them don't beat around the bush too much. Director Wu Tianzhi's acting process is different from other types of filming. He was originally a person who relied on his work to speak and did not like excessive marketing and popularity. So before filming, director Wu Tianxi generally does not make any promotional or makeup plans. This is also why his plays are very suitable for historical dramas, and are mostly historical dramas. During filming, director Wu Tianxi's production team will without exception spend most of their funds on props, venue fabrics, clothing, and makeup. As for posters and videos, they are places that will only be slightly touched upon after the entire play is over. He himself was there, let alone adding Zhou Sanchu's name to the cast this time, which makes it difficult to raise previous doubts about whether Dream of Dreams is not a masterpiece. Xiao Qing has also collaborated with director Wu Tianxi many times and knows what he wants to feel. So while chatting with Ji Ran intermittently, Lin Yin quickly completed her simple and elegant makeup as the only daughter of the Grand Tutor. Ji Ran doesn't have many lines in this scene, but she needs to express a lot of emotions. Ji Ran was originally worried that she wouldn't be able to get into her state in time, but after changing her clothes, she looked at herself in the mirror, dressed in a light blue cotton robe, antique and dignified. Suddenly, I had a sense of depth in my heart. Here, at this moment, she is just Lin Yin, and besides that, no one is. When Ji Ran was ready, it happened to be when Chen Moyan changed into clothes. The director and crew were already waiting outside at this moment, and they happened to meet in the dressing room. Chen Moyan was dressed in makeup and looked very different from all the appearances that Ji Ran had seen before. At this moment, the golden armor is on, exuding a heroic aura. It's very nice, Miss Lin. Chen Moyan couldn't help but have a glint in his eyes, constantly praising it. General Gu praised falsely. Ji Ran said this while giving Chen Moyan a formal courtesy. The two people's eyes touched each other again, and they couldn't help but burst into laughter. The filming location for this scene was set in front of the city gate. After Ji Ran left Zhou Sanchu's room last night, the director also sent Ji Ran the details that needed to be discussed and paid attention to the next day at the same time. The production team of Like a Dream has always emphasized efficiency, and the documents sent by the director are detailed and relevant, so now it can be considered a familiar journey. Ji Ran and the director exchanged glances and waited for Chen Moyan to turn over and get on the horse. After the crowd of actors took their seats, Ji Ran also stood beside the horse. Behind him was the unstoppable force of countless actors, and at the moment when the camera began to operate, in Ji Ran's eyes, there was only Chen Moyan. At first, Ji Ran didn't speak, but raised his hand and handed the sachet to Chen Moyan. Although the two had never played before, Chen Moyan also caught Ji Ran's play very well at this moment and gently took the sachet from Ji Ran's hand. Wait for me to come back and marry you. Chen Moyan spoke up, and as soon as he finished speaking, Ji Ran's ears turned red. He looked to one side and said, Who wants to marry you? If you don't marry me, which man in the capital do you like? Even with a major war looming in a perilous future ahead, Chen Moyan still likes to make half jokes when bidding farewell, so that the originally low atmosphere can be erased. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 The performance was very good, it was hard work. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 The performance was very good, it was hard work. Even with a major war looming in a perilous future ahead, Chen Moyan still likes to make half jokes when bidding farewell, so that the originally low atmosphere can be erased. 
As expected, Ji Ran's face turned completely red when Chen Moyan teased her. In accordance with the etiquette of a wealthy family, he covered his bright red lips with a handkerchief. That's settled then. Father has already prepared fine wine for you and is waiting for you to come back and drink with him. Okay. The horn sounded along with Chen Moyan's promise, which was the last reminder to leave. Chen Moyan glanced at the graceful and graceful woman standing on horseback for the last time. Everyone knew that he had won countless battles and was invincible. However, on the battlefield, with his golden armor and wolf smoke, who could truly be certain of victory? Every time he faced difficulties, surrounded, and persevered, he walked down with the same figure as he remembered. Wait for me to come back. When I come back, we will get married and never be separated again. Card. Director Wu Tianxi's voice rang out, and Ji Rant's gaze changed, slowly converging from the role of Lin Yin. Chen Moyan, who was also in the drama, couldn't help but be stunned when he heard the sound. He looked at Ji Ran with a somewhat dazed expression. In an instant of silence, the director applauded first, and then most of the people on set gave applause to such a new actor. It has to be said that Ji Ran's performance in the first scene can even be extremely excellent. Fortunately, he didn't choose the wrong person at the time. Director Wu Tianxi stood up from behind the camera and wanted to walk towards Ji Ran. Just when he was planning to do so, Yu Guang suddenly saw Zhou Xuancheng. Zhou Xuancheng stood behind everyone at some point, but he remembered confirming before filming that Zhou Xuancheng clearly did not appear here. So the direction that was originally heading towards Ji Ran quickly changed decisively. Director Wu Tianxi looked at Zhou Sanchu and said, Zhou Yingdi, how do you think Miss Ji's acting skills are today? Zhou Sunchu had expected director Wu Tianxi to see him earlier, and he admitted that Wu Tianxi's aesthetics and professional level as a director are indeed at a very high level in the current industry. But unfortunately, Wu Tianxi is someone who enjoys making friends with fame and fortune, and when facing himself, he is also somewhat overly enthusiastic. This is also an important reason why Zhou Sanchu hesitated to agree to play the role of Ru Mengling after receiving the invitation from director Wu Tianxi. However, at this moment, his expression on the face remained as plain as water, nodding in front of everyone without being excessive or belittling, which was already his best response as a senior to new actors. When director Wu Tianxi walked up to Zhou Sanchu, he didn't forget to wave to Ji Ran. At this moment, Ji Ran remained on the set talking to Chen Moyan, only to receive the director's gaze before paying attention to him. Zhou Sanchu noticed Wu Tianxi's movements, but didn't take the initiative to stop. He used words to say something was wrong. So before Ji Ran arrived, he bid farewell and left the set. Originally in place, Ji Ran allowed makeup artists and fashion designers to touch up her makeup and organize her appearance. While chatting with Chen Moyan, who has not yet appeared, about some irrelevant things to help him appear in the film, don't appear so sad. Feeling the gaze of director Wu Tianxi and then looking at Zhou Sanchu, Ji Ran bid farewell to Chen Moyan. The director seems to have something on his end, I'll go over first. Due to the fact that Zhou Sanchu was also there, Ji Ran's heart was beating faster as she was about to leave than during the previous scene. It's even more intense than yesterday when I was nervous about the first scene. I don't know how Zhou Sanchu views the emotions he just showed. Chen Moyan looks better now, take a breath and nod. However, just as Ji Ran lifted his foot, he saw the back of Zhou Xuancheng leaving. Looking at Zhou Sanchu's back, Ji Ran looked at director Wu Tianxi again. The director is now returning to his position step by step, without any expression or communication to himself. She didn't understand what was happening in an instant. Ding! The prompt sound on the phone rings in a timely manner. Ji Ran opened her phone and found an unread WeChat message belonging to Zhou Xuancheng, which came from just now. The performance was very good, it was hard work. Only a few scenes were scheduled today, and the director had originally reserved time for new actors to adapt. But because Ji Ran entered the role and completed it earlier than planned, he directly started the next shooting. 
so she left the set early. Returning to the hotel room, Ji Ran finished washing up carefully and had a simple dinner. In the living room, Ji Ran was holding a cup of corn tea, flipping through her phone and finally looking at the morning chat records. The performance was very good, it was hard work. Thank you, Teacher Zhou. Short two lines of text, flipping upwards, whether it's green or white, are many details they discuss together, as well as some material sent to her by Zhou Sanchu. Ji Ran sat on the ground, watching random TV dramas that Ji Ran had never watched before. That's her habit. In a quiet space, she needs some sound. However, today, Ji Ran rarely put down her phone and looked up at the TV. The content played on the TV was a scene of the male and female protagonists confessing their love in a field of mustard wheat flowers. She can't remember the plot of this TV series clearly, but Ji Ran can still remember how it became popular and a classic at that time. At this moment, the phone also shook like a crowd, and Ji Ran picked it up casually and found a friend application. Producer Deng Changyu The first reaction was to strangely click on this friend application. Ji Ran knew that Deng Changyu was the main director in charge of post-production and promotion in the production team. Although he is a producer, he is not like an ordinary producer. However, the production team responsible for post-production guidance generally does not actively add actors on WeChat. After the preliminary work is completed, they adhere to the director's beliefs. I don't know what Deng Changyu is doing to add her at this time, but Ji Ran still approved the friend application. Hello, Miss Ji. After passing, a message was quickly sent from the opposite side. Ji Ran also replied very seriously. Hello, Producer Deng. May I ask if you have anything to do with me? This time it wasn't that fast. Deng Changyu waited for more than 10 minutes, and when Ji Ran thought he wouldn't reply, the screen lit up again. I went to see your scenes today. I performed very well. After so many years of working in the industry, I have rarely seen actresses like you who have the energy. Ji Ran also picked up her phone and looked at the two messages that popped up. I don't know why, but despite the same praise, Deng Changyu didn't feel as happy as Zhou Sanchu with just one short sentence. Even as Ji Ran looked at these two lines, her intuition made her feel a bit uncomfortable. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Ding You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Ding I don't know why, but despite the same praise, Deng Changyu didn't feel as happy as Zhou Sanchu with just one short sentence. Even as Ji Ran looked at these two lines, her intuition made her feel a bit uncomfortable. However, just as Ji Ran said, thank you, Deng Changyu's third message was also quickly sent. But there are some performance traces that will be more complicated in the post-processing. Miss Ji Ran, do you have time now? Can you come to the top floor room and talk to me in detail? Just finished reading this paragraph, Ji Ran's brain went blank for one or two seconds. She is indeed a newcomer. I don't know if there is a precedent in the production team to demand actors in the later stage, nor do I know if Deng Chanyu's actions comply with regulations. But to a large extent, Ji Ran is in a solitary state on the set. After reading the news for a long time, Ji Ran felt even more uncomfortable and eventually left her phone aside. Turning to picking up the remote control, Ji Ran turned up the sound of the TV and stopped thinking about anything else. Until the end of the two episodes in the blink of an eye, she was disturbed and her mood was disrupted. She didn't take it seriously, just felt that time passed slowly. Just before 1 a.m., Ji Ran picked up her phone again and gently typed a line of text. Sorry, Mr. Deng. I didn't see any news earlier. If I have time next time, I would be happy to have a detailed discussion with you. In the following days, Ji Ran was basically in a state of being on set and in front of the hotel. Zhou Sanchu is also busy with his own filming, and the two are limited to online communication. Ji Ran sometimes asks some questions and can receive patient answers from Zhou Xuancheng. But she never asked Zhou Sanchu about Deng Changyu. 
Fortunately, Deng Chanyu did not receive any response from her afterwards and did not appear on set. Ji Ran was originally worried that he would come and cause trouble, but now it seems to be calm. In just a few days of filming, I almost had to finish half of the scenes where I was alone against Chen Moyan. As a result, Ji Ran and Chen Moyan became much more familiar with each other. Sometimes we would also schedule dinner together, and both Ji Ran and Chen Moyan belonged to the type with fast metabolism, no need for special dietary control, and no weight gain or acne, so the two of them quickly ate together. In summary, during this half week, Ji Ran has been very happy. However, when Deng Changyu announced the organization of the gathering, Ji Ran's mood was clearly not as good. Saturday afternoon happened to be the time for the crew to adjust their rest, so in the large group of everyone's crew, Deng Chanyu began organizing a dinner together. Because Xu and Xu needed to attend an event on Saturday in Zhou, he had already left the film and television city in the morning. And by the end of the event, it was already Monday. Ji Ran estimated that it was for this reason that Deng Chanyu dared to organize gatherings in the group so recklessly. She knew that Zhou Sanchu had always disliked these activities, but he was not in the film and television city now, so having a small gathering with the others would naturally be harmless. Moreover, the person who truly makes the decision is director Wu Tianchir. Ji Ran looked at director Wu Tianchir's acquiescence in the group and naturally understood that Deng Chanyu was a post-production producer for many years, and he didn't want to have an unpleasant dinner together. That's settled then. On Saturday night on the sixth floor of the hotel, we'll see each other, everyone. Deng Changyu gave the final answer and then disappeared into the group. Immediately after, a message popped up on Ji Rant's phone. I should have some time now. See you on Saturday night, Miss Ji Ran. There was also a smiling expression behind it, and Ji Ran finally understood the meaning behind it, his stomach churning with excitement. The first time I hate an expression so much. Ji Ran's first reaction was to ask for help. She opened her contact list and was going to a dinner party tonight. Naturally, she couldn't find Gu Yi. Moreover, even if Gu Yi was brought to the production team, it was of no use. Zhou Sanchu is not here, Chen Moyan. Ji Ran's eyes lit up and she quickly ran upstairs to the door of Chen Moyan's room. Just Ji Ran knocked on the room door for a long time, but no one answered inside. What's going on? Although Chen Moyan likes to joke and be carefree on weekdays, he is actually an otaku with a lazy and casual personality. How could he go out at this time? Ji Ran had a bad premonition in her heart. She casually grabbed a staff member and asked, only to find out that Chen Moyan was also going to attend the event today. Yesterday, Xiao Tan also left early due to family matters. She was one of the few people she knew on this crew, and surprisingly left the film and television city on Saturday at the same time. Ji Ran grabbed her phone and had to return to her room, waiting at the elevator door in a flustered and anxious state. Ding! The elevator door has opened. It's Deng Changyu. He was the only one in the elevator, and Ji Ran's gaze touched that person, reflexively taking a step back. It's okay, I'm not in a hurry. You go down first. Deng Changyu was also surprised to see Ji Ran here. He glanced at the floor and understood that Ji Ran was here to move reinforcements. So he smiled and pressed the button on the elevator door, but the door refused to close for a long time. Come on up, where are you going? Ji Ran refused to go up, and the two of them stood in a stalemate. In that moment, Ji Ran could see the expression in Deng Changyu's eyes. Be more confident in your own guesses. So without stopping at all, Ji Ran suppressed the urge to vomit and turned around to leave, heading towards the stairwell. After fiercely locking the room door, Ji Ran leaned against it, released her strength, and then squatted down. She held her hands on the ground so that it made her feel realistic. The WeChat prompt sounded again, and Ji Ran opened it to find that it was still Deng Changyu. Miss Ji Ran, be sure to tidy up yourself at night and don't lose your composure. I won't be angry about what happened earlier. 
By the way, this is your first time filming, and this drama is related to whether this path can go smoothly. You should know that the post-production is very important. I didn't expect Dang Chanyu to look impressive and speak and do things in private, yet he is so unreasonable. Ji Ran took a screenshot, managed to control her trembling fingertips, exited the WeChat chat box, and then found Zhou Xuanqing's name. Their last conversation was a day ago, and the last message sent by Zhou Sanchu was to wish you a smooth performance tomorrow. Ji Ran's eyes suddenly became moist, unable to see the phone screen clearly. She blinked and two tears rolled down her face. Let's go. Leaving here regardless of everything, disappearing and disconnected, just like what her parents did to her and Jimming back then. Ji Ran looked at the chat box and suddenly had this idea in her heart. But if she did this, what would Zhou Sancha think? She was once so delighted and encouraged to have such a role. End of this chapter